Hey, everybody. Going to start in a few minutes. Just decided to start the video so that if you're interested in joining me, you have a few minutes to get on. And we'll get started shortly. Welcome to the Ponderosa in the new year. Only thing about this is. Hey, Donna. And you. So I see a few of my friends have joined me, Kim and Devin and Carol. Can everybody hear me? If you cannot hear me, let me know. Okay, I hear me on my husband's unit. Okay, so it's January 1, 2018. And I don't know what y'all did last night, but my husband and I went to communion. And then we came home and watched a little fun movie and went to bed and had some of the best sleep that I've had in a long time. And um, woke up this morning really thankful for the blessing and the mercy of God. And um, got to thinking about how fortunate so many of us have been in this last year and how um, the end of the year always makes you think about new beginnings and one of my favorite choirs the Oakwood University Aeolians sing this song new morning new mercies and those of us who are people of faith know that with the dawning of every day we always get a chance to start over but it's something about coming to the end of a year because you've made all of these um, goals and plans when you walk into it and then you get to the end of the year and you find out okay I did this I didn't get to do that. Um, and then there are things that occur in your life that you had absolutely no control over that Providence has allowed and you learn how to adjust to it. So I wanted to kind of touch base with you as we start the new year because there's some new things that are going on. For those of you who are unaware, my husband and I, Edward Goodman, who you all know is Eddie and I have a business in Huntsville, Alabama, Lifestyle Therapeutics. You can go to the website, lifestyletherapeutics.com to learn more about it. And we've been there now about two years doing what we call lifestyle for better health 
through physical therapy and health education and wellness. Happy New Year, Antoinette. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, hey, Tiffany. Um, we have had the privilege of working to help people get better. And for the sake of people who don't know me, who might just be um, interacting with me for the first time via um, this live video, um, I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama, graduated from Oakwood University in home economics, nutrition, got a master's in public health, health education from Loma Linda University. And my entire career has been focused on helping people to improve their lives. Nutrition has been the vehicle that I have done that when I work with people in their communities, in their churches, in their homes. But I have actually had experience training others, teaching at universities, Morris College in South Carolina, Oakwood University here in Huntsville. And then I did some work with Morehouse School of Medicine in Atlanta, um, the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension Service, the South Carolina Department of Public Health. So I have been granted some amazing experiences to see a lot of different people around the country um, in a variety of settings from most rural where they live on dirt roads and you could see the ground through their floorboards to some of the most expensive communities um, based on um, people and their, their jobs and socioeconomic levels. And I had always believed in the role of choice and diet and lifestyle in our health. And I taught that when I was at Oakwood in nutrition education, my parents had a, a vegetarian sub shop. We used to do all that sort of stuff um, in the community. And then when I went to Loma Linda and I learned so much there and I just really wanted to spend time teaching people how to improve their health. And so God has given me that opportunity but it wasn't until 1996 when I was working, I had just left Morehouse School of Medicine and gone to um, um, the state of, Alabama, um, state of Georgia's nutrition office when I was diagnosed with invasive aggressive metastatic breast cancer. And the ironic thing for me was that I had just taught people at Morehouse how not to get cancer, and then I had cancer. And I was very concerned because everything that they were telling me was that I was gonna die, I was gonna die soon, even if I did all the treatment, I was going to die. And I'm like, the Bible says I will not die but live. I have a seven-year-old son. I'm married to this guy. I don't want to die. So what are some things that I can do? And so I kind of looked at this. I began to see this as a personal experience because God had been talking to me all along about making better choices myself. But now I had to make the choices. I couldn't just teach them anymore. I had to do it if I wanted to improve my health. And so I said, okay, God, I'm going to see if I can find um, some resources where I don't have as much toxic um, things prescribed to my body. And every place that I went to gave me a worst case scenario, and they wanted to prescribe something even more toxic than what the previous physician said. So I got on my knees, got in my closet, asked God for some direction, and I decided to go to a lifestyle center. Um, stayed there 10 days, changed my life, discovered the role of some of the things I was consuming in the development of the breast cancer. And while I was treating the breast cancer, I was also beginning to um, improve in other areas of my health that I hadn't even spoken of the physicians about. So I decided that if God was going to um, answer my prayer and give me grace, because really that's what a new day is about. It's about grace and another chance to do better and, and get stuff right. I, would, I was very interested in people in the Southeastern United States, especially because of all the data that goes along with um, health and, and health disparity. And you're walking down the street and people are obese and you're in the hospital and their legs are getting cut off and you're in church and everybody is praying because somebody else is sick or dying and the minister wants you to visit people in the hospital and i'm like lord i don't know how much i can do but i want to make a difference in the lives of my people and so he 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 gave me that opportunity and for a number of years in atlanta we were able to do that and now that we're back in huntsville we're doing this this thing again and as I began to make lifestyle changes, not only did the cancer go away, but I lost weight, 
and I had a lot of problems with um, constipation. They went away. I had a lot of trouble with my periods. That all cleared up for, for women who were still menstrua menstruating. I went from bleeding 10 days a month to two days a month with no cramping. I used to have horrible, horrible migraine headaches, and they all went away. Um, one of the surprises, and this is something that we talk about a lot in our classes, was a sexual benefit. We thought we were having really great sex. At that time, we were 37, 38 years old. You know, we were hooking it up. And we discovered that as we made lifestyle changes as a family, the sexual experience that we had was even better because our bodies were better. And so that made for more joy. And as I share this around the country with people, it's the gift that God gave us in the garden and he wants us to enjoy it. And so I was very happy to see that. And so I asked, for an opportunity to talk to people. And as we started sharing this information with people, we started seeing their lives change. I was involved in a project with the Office of Minority Health in Atlanta where we partnered with them and a primary health care center. And we did some things with local churches. We worked with Cascade United Methodist Church was one of the churches where we actually went to five churches in the community for a month at a time. And we taught people how to eat better. And each week that we went, somebody would say, I lost weight, or I was trying to get pregnant, and you've given me some information, or the doctor told me that I was an alcoholic, but I'm saved and sanctified, and I don't drink alcohol, but some of the information that you shared with me helped me to understand why he could have come up with that conclusion, and so it was just amazing for us to see God do what we know he can do, and we have been blessed to see him continue to move in people's lives. And that's, that's kind of what I'm inviting you to join us in. Starting this month, we're going to go on a journey to better health and it's going to strictly be an online course. My friend Kim Clyatt Long has encouraged me to do something like this. And God sent um, an amazing woman of God, Lola Moore Johnson into my life mid-year last year and was able to just bless my soul with some great information and skills. And I've been following another woman, Nicole Walters, who is just walking in the gift that God has given them. And so what we want to do, because we're here in Huntsville, everybody can't get to us. And a lot of times when I'm talking to people, they want to know, Donna, how can I, how can I? So we decided that this year we're going to do what's called a journey to better health. It's going to be an online course. If you're interested in participating in it, you have to go to the website, which I have already posted, lifestyletherapeutics.com. And when you go to the website, as soon as it comes up, there'll be a page there that says coming in January. You need to click on get notified, fill out your information and submit it. And I'll be able to send you all that information so that you can journey with us. What our plans are right now, and I say that kind of loosely because I have learned in the last 22 years that um, I can plan my ways, but the Lord directs my steps. And so our intention right now is to start on next Sunday morning. I'll probably do a live broadcast every week for the next eight weeks at about eight o'clock in the morning, central time, somewhere between seven and eight, because I want to um, not tie up your morning. And if you're on the West Coast, I don't want it to be too early, but I don't want it to be too late for people who actually may be going to church. Um, and each week we're going to discuss an action that you can take because there's a whole lot of information now out about a plant-based diet. And we'll talk about that eventually, whether you're vegan or non-vegan or whole food plant-based or any other variety, variety between that. And that's an awesome place to begin. And that's where I started as well. But it's also important to know that there are other lifestyle choices that you can make on a daily basis that are beneficial to you, that don't take a lot of work, that will change your life. And that's what I'm trying to do. Give you the power to, to radically change your life and receive the greatest gift that God wants us to have, which is to prosper and be in good health. As a public health educator, my heart just bleeds as I watch what's happening in the capital in this country and how many people who are dependent on programs that the government has given and on health insurance for that matter and medication are pretty much being tossed to the streets. And I think while that is horrible for them, if you're willing to make some changes and some choices, you can recover your health 
and be about the business of telling other people. So the first thing is every Sunday morning, we're going to do a live. And those of you who go to the website, lifestyletherapeutics.com, sign in so that you can get notified. I will forward all that information to you so that you'll know where we're going to do it, whether it'll be here or YouTube or another platform that everyone um, can access. And only the registrants will be able to participate. There is no fee for the course. I'm doing this one for free for eight weeks. You're going to have my time, which usually is 50 to $75 per hour. So, you know, I'm sowing some seed into your life this way. Um, in addition to that, I'm revamping the book, Cooking Up Good Health, which will be available and downloadable. That will cost somewhere between $10 and $15. We're, we're, prob we're trying to figure out whether or not we're going to um, include all the information in it that I want you to do. Um, but in the book, you will actually have media links to other professionals who are, are experts in the field of lifestyle medicine. You're going to have links to cooking videos. I'm going to be doing some other videos for you, and it'll be something that's downloadable. In addition to that, there'll be meal plans and um, recipes, of course, and shopping tips that will benefit you as well. Um, the second thing is we have um, been talking to Channel 48 here in Huntsville. Those of you who went to school here or grew up here are familiar with it. And starting on next week, I believe it's the 10th of January, on Wednesday during the noon hour, I will be there on Wellness Wednesday doing um, the Journey to Better Health, Cooking Up Good Health with Donna Green Goodman. And those times I'm going to be there every week with Elizabeth Gentle, who's the host of the noon show. And we will be cooking up good health. And the theme for this series of demonstrations is fight for your life, P-H-Y-T for your life, which is short for phytochemicals. The plant foods that everyone is moving to, we always knew in nutrition and health education, some physicians knew about the value of plant foods as far as their nutrients like vitamins and minerals, you know, all that sort of stuff, protein, carbs, whatever. But in recent years, we have discovered that the Creator God has placed some amazing um, um, chemicals in the food called phytochemicals that work to keep you well. And so while I am 100% plant-based, I'm not a whole foods plant-based because I eat things that started out as plants but may, may have another um, form when I'm using them. Neither am I um, an ethical vegan because I wear leather and um, I use honey because the Bible says to eat honey. And that's what I do. So wherever you are on the journey is where I'm trying to meet your need. And if if you want to be whole foods plant-based, fine. If you just want to do whole um, plant-based, if you want to do vegan as a lifestyle, wherever you are, and I think that I have learned so much about that in my years as a health educator, is that I'm not trying to get you to where I need you, want you to be or think is best for you as much as I'm trying to support you and facilitate you to get you to where you want to go. So the recipes that will be featured on um, the midday show on WAFF 48 are going to feature foods that um, I'm going to talk about from the perspective of the phytochemicals that are in them and how they can benefit your life. Now, if you don't live here in Huntsville and you are available at noon on, on every Wednesday, you're not going to be able to see it. So what we're going to work with them to do is to upload the cooking demonstration onto our YouTube page. So if you are not aware, we have a YouTube page, Lifestyle Therapeutics, two exclamation marks behind it on YouTube. And we already have about eight or nine videos that are loaded there. And we'll be continuing to load those on a weekly basis so that you can see those in addition to the ones that are already there. And that will be a benefit to you as well. And then everybody can access them whether they're on Facebook or not. The third thing is, I'm talking to Walmart locally about doing some things with them. And um, as soon as I know the details about it, um, I will share those details with you. We're already going to be doing some grocery store tours for our clients, but we're hoping to do some other things in partnership with them, which will be a benefit to your soul as well. I am really excited about this because I believe 
that when people are given the tools that they need, they can make the changes that they want to make and they can have the life that they want to have. And it doesn't have to cost you a whole lot of money. And you can do it at the pace that you want to do it. And you can see your health recover and recover quickly. There is a couple of groups that I'm online in and on Facebook that are plant-based, vegan, vegan vegetarian, and I've joined about five or six of those. And one of them, Darius Williams, who is a chef and has a restaurant in Atlanta that is not a vegetarian restaurant by any means, decided that at the beginning of every year, he does something for the first 30 days. And this year, what he has decided to do is to cook vegan for 31 days. And he started uploading his videos and recipes on yesterday. So if that's something that you'd like to see as well. And, and as I have interacted with this group, there are a lot of questions about it. Is it going to taste good? And what he said was, yeah, we're going to find some good food and we're going to cook it up so that you can enjoy it and, and it tastes good to you and it's good for you. And if you wanna continue this journey forever, you can. If you wanna just do it with him for those 31 days to see those recipes, that's another resource for you. There are also a bunch of other groups on Facebook that support um, healthy lifestyles, plant-based eating, and um, take a look around to see what those are because I think they would be um, a real benefit to you as well. Now, um, because it's the new year, um, a lot of folk last night, as a matter of fact, on our way home from communion, my husband and I stopped at Kroger's to pick up a couple things. And we went down the aisle looking for some refried fried beans. And there were two brothers standing on the line looking for the black eyed peas. Well, it's eight o'clock now. They all gone. Everybody has already bought them. They have cooked them or they're cooking them. And, um, we were laughing because he couldn't find any. There were none in the freezer. There were no dry ones. There were no canned ones. So I thought of one other section of the store he could go to. I sent him over there and he couldn't find him either. I'm not necessarily um, into the reason that people do the black eyed peas and greens for New Year's, which the, the peas represent the coins and the greens represent the dollars that you want everybody to be putting in your hand throughout the year. But what I did was to just quickly look up some of the things that are relative and I have my own black eyed peas that are almost done right now. Um, we have a garden out here at the Ponderosa and we've got some collards out there. I think we have some broccoli and maybe some kale. And my husband, it's 12 degrees y'all down here in Alabama. It's gonna be eight degrees tonight. But he promised me that he would go outside today and pick a bunch of greens so that I could cook some fresh collards. These would be organically grown in the red Alabama dirt to go with these um, black eyed peas. And I'll probably make some cornbread too. And we'll just, we're chilling today. We're at that place of chill. So I went online to be certain and I've added to our website, lifestyletherapeutics.com. When you get to the website, go to the spot that says lifestyle for better health, scroll down in there and go to the page that says scientifically sound. And we'll be placing articles there from time to time relative to plant-based eating and to exercise and to lifestyle medicine because there's so much good information about there now. And when you look there, there are two great articles that talk about the value of eating black eyed peas and collard greens. Well, I, I love collard greens. And there's this whole conversation in public health and nutrition about how you cook them and how you need to steam them and don't overcook them. Well, here's some free information for you. In the winter time, when you grow the greens and the frost hits them, they become quite tender. And so if you were raised near where your, you know, Uncle Bubba somebody had a farm and you ate those greens, you knew how they tasted on your tongue. And in the summertime, the greens don't cook as tender as quickly. So you're cooking those greens all day in the broth, trying to get the same texture that you would in the winter. And it's really not going to happen um, because they haven't been hit by the frost. So when you cook the greens in the wintertime after the frost hit them, they're sweeter and they cook more quickly. In the summertime, you have to cook them longer. So there's a lot out about when you cook your vegetables, don't cook them in a lot of liquid. And one of the things that I also like to include when I'm talking to people is culture. In my community, when we cook collards or kale or turnip or cabbage and I was growing up, my mother and father would sop that um, um, what do you call it, pot liquor with the cornbread. And then sometimes she'd pour the pot liquor in a cup 
and we had to drink the pot liquor because she knew that the nutrients had leached into the liquid and that would be healthy for us. So if you're cooking collards with onions and garlic and bell pepper and maybe some red pepper flakes or a little cayenne pepper and you want to add something that's going to give you the smokiness that you normally get with turkey wings or necks or fat back, you can find some um, vegetarian broths that are available on the market and there's some. I use McKay's chicken style seasoning, which is like a chicken broth. And you put that in there, you're not trying to steam that because you need something to sop that corn ready. And so culturally, we don't pour the broth down the drain. We drink the broth. And so anything that has leached from the greens that is caught in the broth, we are able to get because we're also drinking the broth. So that's just a little information for you. We don't steam ours. We will sometimes saute them in a lot less water and olive oil. And I think that's what we're going to do today because they are so um, tender. But that's something that you should be reminded of. So you can go to the website, look for the article that I posted there. But I wanted to share a couple things that I found about the black eyed peas. We know that they're high in fiber. And for people who are diabetic, if you're going to eat beans, that really helps to keep your sugars from spiking. They, they help them to go in the normal way so that you don't have to use as much insulin and your pancreas gets better and the weight comes down and you feel a whole lot better. They're excellent because they're high fiber, so that's going to help with your digestion. They prevent anemia. All beans do because they have iron in them. They lower your blood pressure because they're high in potassium. Folate, which we often talk about for pregnant women, which is important in the development of babies is also important to us because it helps the body to make new cells that um, significant, specifically play a role in replication of DNA. And that's what happened to me as a breast cancer patient. The breast cancer got in there and it was replicating instead of the breast cancer cells that were supposed to replicate. They were poorly differentiated. So by making the lifestyle choices that I made, I was able to, to write that so that we're getting the right kind of cell replication instead of the other way. In addition, your black eyed peas are excellent for detox, which is what a lot of y'all about to do now. You know, you partied hard last night or not. You're just getting home from church or somebody's house or you're going to somebody's house for dinner today. And then you're going to do this amazing detox. Your body detoxes all the time. You don't have to do a special detox. You really don't. But what you can do is like a cleanse. Stop eating the crap that you're eating. Maybe drink water for a couple days and add fruit juices and then go back to other foods and your body will check itself. Black eyed peas, turns out, are one of the greatest foods for detox. In addition to that, collard greens and all cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, turnips, greens, all of those things also enter into the digestive system and the digestive process and they pull out the stuff that's not supposed to be there. So one of the things you can do to detox this year is get you some black eyed peas and some collard greens and make yourself some cornbread if you want to, to go with it and eat a big bowl of that. And by the time it gets to that intestine, it is really going to do some amazing things to help you get rid of all of the toxins that are in the system. And then Another thing that we like to do at the beginning of the year is the Daniel diet. A lot of people, I know at our church, we're going to be doing a fast that starts on next Sunday where we're, we're going to um, physically, we're going to fast from sugar and processed foods and meat products and meat and meat products. And then we're going to fast from anything else that is negative to us. And we're going to fast from negativity. And then we're going to do something positive every day for people in the community. And so it amazes me when I work with clients how they'll do the Daniel fast, how they'll be faithful with the Daniel fast, and then as soon as the fast is over, they write back to everything that they wanted to do. Humans, I understand it. But when you do these things and the body regulates itself, then you can continue to have better health. But when you go backwards, then you're setting your body backwards. And that's not anything that you really want to do. When it comes to the detox by the collard greens, get them as fresh as you can. We used to buy the big bunches from the Decap Farmer's Market when we lived there and cut those babies. It's an empty nest here now, so we don't do as much as we used to do. We'll get them from the garden or I'll buy them from the grocery store where they're already pre-washed and cut and we'll cook those up. And again, I said, if they're 
if they've been hit by the frost, they are already tender, so you don't have to worry about how long they're going to cook. Um, it has been my joy to, to be confirmed that God heard my prayer and, and decided that he could trust me with more life. It's been 22 years now since my diagnosis, Yay. and I have been really fortunate, and, and he's been merciful to me. Um, I learned, however, along the way that sometimes his answer is no. And those of you who know me personally know my family history. And you know that I've lost my mother, my father, and my brother. My, my father to colon cancer, my mother to endometrial cancer, and my brother to AIDS. And my dad was diagnosed with colon cancer the year before I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And... We watched him make lifestyle changes and the doctors were amazed. He never did any chemo or anything like that. And he was doing so good. And then one day he decided he didn't want to do good anymore. And he started making poor choices. The cancer returned. He was dead in a year. My mom was one of those black women who did not like to go to the doctor. And sure enough, because she didn't do that, um, her cancer was found when she was given 18 months to live. And she made a lot of changes, which perhaps helped her to fight it, but she ended up succumbing to it. And my brother, who um, was actually a cocaine addict for a number of years, and we're not exactly sure how he contracted HIV and it turned to AIDS, but in the last year or two before his death, um, he was in and out of our home a lot more. And when he was living this life, of positive healthy lifestyle choices his cravings for the drugs were zero and he lived that last year doing so much better than he had before and so as i was helping to take care of each of them as they were sick and eventually died i'm questioning i'm like god what are you doing and you know because you you're extending and giving grace and mercy to me but i'm watching my family one by one just die and i don't i don't like how that's feeling so as I'm going through the process with them, and if any of you have ever cared for a loved one who is terminally ill, um, there are a lot of ups and downs. And as I was watching what was going on with my family members, what I began to see was that while many times we look at healing as not having the breast cancer, not having to take the the um, medication for heart disease or diabetes or anything like that anymore. Those are all wonderful things to do. But as a health educator, and I said this to somebody the other day, when I'm working with patients and they're like, you know, Donna, I know I really need to stop drinking this alcohol or I need to stop smoking or I just need to quit eating fried foods or I need to get my butt up and go and exercise. And I say, right, you already know that. So then tell me why you're not doing it. Many of us, the, the poor choices that we're making are not about the poor choices, but it's about what's driving us to make the poor choices. And in my own life, I did a lot of caffeine. Caffeine changes your breast tissue and increases your risk of breast cancer. And when I got the cancer, I still had to deal with the caffeine and the reason why I was doing the caffeine. And the reason I did the caffeine was because it made me feel better after I, 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 I ate some chocolate. I didn't drink it. I just ate lots of chocolate. And so when we get to what the reason is behind our choices, then we can make better choices. And as I watched my parents and my brother and their lives as they were slipping away from me, what God showed me was I was not going to see their health manifested in this life. But what I saw was their spiritual healing. They weren't sad and confused. And one day I walked past my mom and said, I got it. My dad called us to the hospital. And he talked about some things with my mom and my brother and I. And, we and my brother was sent to the hospital by... Um, ambulance and and when we got there to talk to him he kind of had this far away look in his eye and i'm talking to him about some things he's like donna i'm good i'm good and that's really what the creator god is trying to get us to and when you look at stories in the bible when he talked to the woman at the well um you know that's not your husband and she's trying to divert and go someplace else 
when he talked to the rich young ruler, he went straight to what he needed to say to him. And the rich young ruler decided, this is not what I want to do. We need to get to, to the core of what's going on so that healing can occur. And as that healing occurs, it's going to manifest itself in, in other ways. And as I watched my family go to sleep, what I was positive about was though this was going to be horrible for me, you know, everybody that I had grown up with in my nuclear family was now gone. And that's a hard pill to swallow. But I knew that when they wake up the next time, we'll see the physical healing because the mental, emotional, and spiritual healing had occurred as well. And so as we embark on this journey to better health this year for the next eight weeks, I want you to be thinking about that sort of stuff because that is is at the root of what's going on. And many of us have been traumatized in childhood. If you're an African person, African-American person in this country, you are facing racism all the time. If you're in an abusive relationship, if you are working harder than you need to be working, all of these things take a toll on our bodies and we're looking to um, um, numb ourselves or medicate ourselves so that we can go through. And I'm hoping that in the time that we spend over the next eight weeks together, that you get to it. And sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. And sometimes you're going to want to scream. And sometimes you're going to want to choke somebody. But if you can trust the process, as Paulette Gates says, trust the process, um, you're not only going to be able to get through the process to better health, wherever that is that you're trying to go. But once you get to better health, when you look at the stories in the Bible and Jesus fed the 5,000, he told them, take this and tell somebody else. When he healed, talked to the woman at the well, she went back and she told somebody else. Because every single time you have a chance to get better, it's not for you. It's for you to tell somebody else. And in the times that we're living right now, I'm, I'm watching all these people on these vegan pages and they're talking about how they got better by making these choices and they're telling other people and people are, are praising them because they're looking for answers to get better. And when you're healthier, you're able to do more and love better and be better. And that's really what God has asked us to be. His greatest wish is that we prosper and be in good health. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and he wants us to be able to reflect him beautifully through the healthy choices that we make. So how does this help you? Diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, um, um, autoimmune diseases, drug addiction, all that stuff. We were not born with that stuff. That didn't happen. God came to give us life and give it abundantly. The devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and for me as a woman of faith, that's where I come from. If you're not a person of faith and you happen to be watching this or see it now, the fact of the matter is the whole reason physicians are physicians and hospitals exist is because we weren't born to be sick. So they've been spending all this time and money to get us well. And so if you want to reverse those diseases, if you don't want to be constipated anymore, if you want to have better sex, if you want whatever you want to do to be better, you need to join us for this journey to better health. Go to the website, lifestyletherapeutics.com, sign in, send me the information so that I can send it back to you and we'll be able to make um, some real changes for the future. Some of my friends don't know it yet, but I have included them in my list of health professionals. Um, I'm going to brag for a minute right now. There's something about going to an HBCU. I graduated Oakwood University, my husband, Tuskegee University. And the university that we went to in Alabama, Oakwood University, has graduated a lot of awesome people. And some of you around the world who, who may be working with them may not know why they're so awesome. It's because we walked those amazing grounds at Oakwood University. And, and at that school, um, we have, we figured out how important it is to integrate service into what we've been called to do. And, and that's what we're about, trying to reach people, make people better.
And that's that's what we want to do. And so if you're working with somebody, if you haven't heard about it, um, visit their website as well. Um, listen out for, for those names. Watch those of us who are doing those sorts of things. This HBCU is actually, and I see somebody is screaming AAMU in the house. All HBCUs rock. I'm telling you that. But the HBCU that I went to is the only vegetarian campus in the country, and they offer vegetarian and vegan um, options, and they are a part of the Healthy Campus Initiative, where some of the same principles that I'll be sharing in our journey to better health are a part of it. And then another way to connect, if indeed you want to do this journey with us, is via churches. I have been participating for the last three years with the Healthy Churches 2020 initiative started by Pernessa Seal, Dr. Pernessa Seal. That right there is amazing. To go to this meeting on an annual basis in between three and 500 African-American um, people are there who represent a variety of churches and they keep saying, we have to make our people better. So if you are interested in that initiative or you're already a part of that initiative and you have a group of people who wanna participate, Sign up, email me. We'll see how we can make this available so that church groups can participate in it as well. If indeed there are um, sororities, fraternities, other groups of people who want to do this, we just want to get y'all better so we can get other people better and be healthy once again. I am scrolling through these comments now to see if there's anything that I need to answer. If you have a quick question right now, I can look at your questions as they're coming up to see if there's anything else that I need to address personally. It's a journey to better health. It's gonna last eight weeks. We are partnered with what I'll be doing on WAFF 48 so that you can see those videos and we're gonna post those videos. Anthony Perkins, who is my um, producer for my cooking show, has also posted um, the website for WAFF.com and we'll get started there next Wednesday on the 10th for Wellness Wednesday doing those. And then we're, we'll update you on what we're going to do with Walmart. You need to go to lifestyletherapeutics.com to sign up if this is what you want to participate in. And then you know how it is in worship. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Sometimes you're eating right, but you ain't sleeping good. Sometimes you're sleeping good, but you're having a stressful relationship. And so we're going to talk about a bunch of those different things and figure out how you can start doing them. And I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody to feel that they cannot do this because that is not what God said. God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And above all things, he wants you to prosper and be in good health. And it's 2018, people. It's time to do what it is you need to do. Let me check these questions again to see if anybody is saying anything. The website has been typed in. It's Lifestyle Therapeutics. Lola Moore Johnson, thank you for pouring into my life. Um, I see Daryl Alexander who's on here. Um, you can do this. You can do this. You can tell anybody about it. Um, it's one of the best things that's happened to my life. Um, I'm telling you. And if you don't want to be 100% plant-based, you don't have to be, but you need to be eating more plant foods that can make you better. And I'll share the recipes with you. That's not going to be a problem. I don't see any more questions. This video, of course, is going to be saved. If anybody wants to see it or share it with other people later on, that is something that you can do. Go to the website, lifestyletherapeutics.com. Click on the button that says get notified. Don't let somebody else take your place. Make sure that you're a part of it. Um, and we will be emailing out to you this week all the specific details of it. And we'll continue to add other information for you. Again, we have the website, lifestyle at our clinic here in Huntsville. If there are people who need physical therapy of any kind, we accept you on the website. We talk about the insurances that we accept. Um, in addition to that, my husband learned when I had breast cancer the value of hydrotherapy. And he graduated from the PT school at um, Tuskegee, where you know how some of our schools were not given all of the advantage, so they worked with what they had. And hydrotherapy was something that he was taught there, but didn't use as much when he got out professionally. And he has discovered that it is integral to helping people who have diabetic neuropathy and other peripheral vascular neuropathies and neuropathy 
that is chemotherapy induced. And so if you have any of those and you're in this area or you are from out of the area, but you can find a place to stay and come, um, you can um, have a physician refer you to us and we can get you scheduled for physical therapy. In addition to that, all the patients who come to our clinic, and I think I saw Ms. Carol who signed on earlier today, are eligible for a weekly free cooking class as a part of your care. And then if you're interested in other things, wellness counseling, I'll be able to do that for you. So we have that. We have the YouTube channel. You can go there now and look at those videos. Anthony Perkins will be uploading some more videos and we're going to be doing some new ones that are going to help walk you through this journey to better health. Um, and you can always follow us on Lifestyle Therapeutics, which is on Facebook. You can follow me at Still Shouten, S-T-I-L-L-S-H-O-U-T-I-N, on Twitter and Instagram. And for those of you who may have never heard of the books that I have written, Cooking Up Good Health, Something to Shout About, those are available on our website, um, on the website stillshouting.com. You can go there and order that. Um, what else can I think of that you might be interested in? I think that about covers everything. Are there any more questions? Let me look and see here. Um, no, I don't see anything. Okay, my girl Linda Mims, we had a hard year this girl, year, girl, but God is good. And she is saying, by God's grace, 2018 will be awesome. I thank you for that, Linda. I want you to know, however you think 2018 is going to be, God says that what he's going to give you is going to be exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. And if by chance something that doesn't seem positive happens to you, Look to see what God is trying to teach you in that experience, and it will become positive. The experience with my parents and my brother gave me an opportunity to become more sensitive to death. It has definitely helped me to be more sensitive to AIDS, and I've done some things with Kenny Anderson and David Person. Um, and so the negative experiences that you may, may have are really blessings in disguise. And so we are walking into 2018 with a cup of hot tea, and we're going to do this thing. We're going to do it right. I look forward to getting your sign-ups. If you have any questions and you want to email us directly, ltxclinic at gmail.com, and we can respond to you. You know you can always reach me on Facebook. Um, I look forward to it, and I can't wait to see what God is going to do in our lives and in the lives of others who decided that they will not die, but live, and they will live abundantly. Happy 2018 to all of y'all. Let's go do this. Love you. Bye.